Having a vendor substitute a substandard alloy for a rocket component can cost you everything. Here we see a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket on its way to orbit after a successful launch. And here we see what happens when a metal brace supporting a helium-filled carbon overwrap pressure vessel gives way under acceleration, allowing the pressure vessel to break free and explode on impact with other rocket components, causing a complete loss of the spacecraft. Welcome to the Terran Space Academy. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for listening, as we try to help educate you with what you need to know to succeed in the space industry. This lesson will be an in-depth analysis of some of the most sophisticated aluminum alloys in use today by the aerospace industry. Aluminum has been used for aerospace as far back as the 1800s. Count Ferdinand of Zeppelin used it to make his hydrogen-filled airships. It is still the most used metal in aerospace applications because of its strength, low density, and resistance to corrosion. The Wright brothers used an aluminum engine block for their first manned flight in 1903. They had discovered that the metal could be strengthened by heating it. Many metals, including iron and aluminum, if heated and rapidly cooled, will have their atoms form a more ordered crystal-like structure, making them very resistant to corrosion. Aluminum in the aerospace industry is almost always used with other metals to form an alloy. Sometimes a fraction of a percent of an added metal can dramatically change the properties of your alloy. Most metals start to break down with exposure to oxygen, and a combination of heat and oxygen is almost always destructive. When exposed to oxygen, aluminum will form a layer of aluminum oxide, which is Al2O3. Aluminum oxide is found in crystalline form in the mineral corundum. Corundum would be transparent, but impurities in nature such as iron, titanium, chromium, vanadium, and magnesium can cause these crystals to be red, blue, green, or other colors, which we call rubies, sapphires, and emeralds. This top layer of transparent aluminum oxide that forms over an aluminum alloy makes it very resistant to corrosion. In fact, the aerospace industry was very happy to find that transparent aluminum, as mentioned in the Star Trek IV film The Voyage Home, is possible. Aluminum oxynitride, often called ALON, is created by fusing together aluminum, oxygen, and nitrogen under pressure with a laser to remove electrons and allow chemical bonding. The resultant material is a transparent metal. This makes for excellent windows and telescope shields for use in space, as it is much stronger and lighter than glass or any other plastic-based alternative. This material is also being used in the Tesla Cybertruck's windows. Aluminum alloys used in aerospace over the last 70 years include the alloys 2014, 2219, 7050, and 7055. The 7 series alloys are made brittle by exposure to cryogenic liquids and would not be a good choice for this purpose. Aluminum alloys were used in the Space Shuttle Super Lightweight External Tank, which held the hydrogen to be burned by the Space Shuttle main engines. It is also used to construct the Space Launch System main tank. These tanks are also made from the aluminum alloy 2195, which replaced the 2219 aluminum copper alloy used previously and saved over 2,725 kilograms on these tanks. The Falcon 9 uses an alloy of aluminum and lithium in much of its structure. The fuel and oxidizer tanks on the Falcon 9 are made with the top and bottom domes of the tanks being just aluminum, while the cylindrical portion of the tank is made from aluminum lithium alloy. There are many reasons to use different alloys of a metal in different components of a structure. The cylindrical portion of the tank will undergo hoop stress, axial stress, and torsion, while the top and bottom are more spherical and have different stress dynamics. The graphic you see here shows how they go from a plate of aluminum to a cylindrical structure. SpaceX uses low-density aluminum alloy plates in its fuel tanks. 
These plates are called Airware 2195-T84 by the manufacturer and is produced by a company called Constellium. Aluminum is a softer metal than steel and has a much lower melting point and two sections can be joined with a process called friction stir welding. Friction stir welding uses a fast rotating pressure device to fuse two pieces of aluminum. The full composition of the aluminum lithium alloy used by SpaceX, again called Airware 2195-T84, by weight is at least 92.4% aluminum with up to 4.3% copper, 1.2% lithium, 0.16% zirconium, 0.80% magnesium, 0.60% silver, 0.25% manganese, 0.15% iron, and finally 0.12% silicone. These alloys may be complicated, but adding elements can have a very significant effect on the alloy's characteristics. Adding lithium can save mass as the density of aluminum is 2.70 grams per cubic centimeter, while that of lithium is only 0.534 grams per cubic centimeter. Lithium is in fact the lightest possible metal until we have metallic hydrogen, which will actually be a liquid metal and not a solid. And a small addition of these other elements can produce alloys that are very formable and machinable, while still being stronger under extreme conditions. The aluminum alloy 2195-T84 has a 5% higher modulus and greater tensile strength than older aluminum alloys, providing a high strength, damage resistant, and friction stir weldable alloy that is excellent for cryogenic applications like the supercooled RP-1 and liquid oxygen used by SpaceX in the Falcon 9. Modulus is the engineering term used to describe the stiffness or elasticity of a material. It is equal to the stress applied divided by the resulting elastic strain. A stiffer material will have a higher modulus. If a material becomes too stiff, it can become brittle. Exposure to repeated heating and cooling as Falcon 9 rockets are reused can affect the tensile strength of an alloy. The Falcon 9 uses aluminum alloy 2195 and that seems to have worked out well, but some other alloys are available with similar or even possibly better properties. These airware alloys were specifically designed by Constellium for the aerospace industry. One of these is the aluminum alloy 2050 that replaced the 7050 alloy mentioned previously and provides a 4% density reduction and a 5% elastic modulus improvement. Alloy 2195 can only be used up to a thickness of 57 millimeters or 2.5 inches. Over that thickness, the alloy 2050 must be used. 2050 is stable up to a thickness of 16.5 centimeters or 6.5 inches. All of these alloys have a high density of particles identified as aluminum 2 copper lithium and called T1 particles. These particles anchor and slow down movement of dislocations creating a high strength alloy that resists fracture and deformation. It is very important that these alloys are resistant to embrittlement when exposed to cryogenic liquids. The newer alloy 2050 may be even better than the 2195 currently used by SpaceX with improved tensile strength and fracture toughness at both liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen temperatures as can be seen in these test results. These alloys are also tested for stress corrosion cracking or SCC as well as salt corrosion. The alloy 2195 was put under 37,000 kilograms per square inch of pressure for 30 days with no problem. The alloy 2050 was able to withstand even harsher testing. Another problem with aluminum alloys exposed to cryogenic temperatures is the softening that can occur with reheating. The reusable components of the Falcon 9 must experience the super cold minus 160 Celsius of liquid oxygen with the exterior of the tank experiencing the high surface temperatures from friction as it flies through the atmosphere. Alloy 2050 is very stable at cold temperatures and up to 177 Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And as is shown in this graph, Alloy 2050 maintains its strength up to a temperature above 150 Celsius or about 300 Fahrenheit, which is where it starts to break down. 
As resources from lunar and asteroid mining become available, we will soon be able to experiment with alloys of aluminum and osmium, or aluminum and iridium. Alloys we cannot currently make because of the scarcity of these metals. The entire amount of osmium available to humans today is less than one ton per year. The asteroid Psyche is the surviving core of a destroyed planet floating in our solar system. It has a diameter of 186 kilometers and a mass of 2.72 times 10 to the 19 kilograms. Psyche is made mostly of iron, nickel, and cobalt, metals perfect for making strong steel alloys, but also contains billions of tons of precious metals. Whereas the Earth's crust is 0.004 parts per million platinum, most metallic asteroids should have up to 19 parts per million. Psyche would have even more as the densest elements would have sunk to the core of the protoplanet while it was molten. The estimated value of the asteroid psyche is difficult to calculate, but if we value it at only two American cents per kilogram, we have a value of over 500 quadrillion dollars. Something to think about. Thanks for listening. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And you can find us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Terran Space Academy if you would like to support us in our efforts to prepare you for a brilliant future in the space industry. Stay safe.